finally, we're finally here. Oh, that was cool. I finally watched both of these movies. From a pale genius who's cold, principled, and unfairly <laughs> maligned comes a Nolan film about that same kind of guy. <laughs> we're like the, what, fifth time now? He's got a type. Oppenheimer. <laughs> He's got a type. Okay. Meet J. Robert Oppenheimer, a man smart enough to understand Tenet on the first watch. <laughs> you see beyond the world we live in. He's the rare nutting professor who may not have what it takes in the lab. Useless in the lab. Would you nutting like help? professor. Build it? Oh no. Oppenheimer <gasps> couldn't run a hamburger stand. He's all about theory. I couldn't. But he's the only man you call when you need a theoretical physicist. That's right. We're talking about turning theory into a practical weapon system. Slash meteorologist. It'll break before dawn. How can we know? <laughs> I know this desert. Slash polylinguist. You learned enough Dutch in six weeks to get a right. lecture on quantum mechanics. That was crazy. Now I am become death. Destroyer of worlds. Oh, I've read Das Kapital, all three volumes in the original German. Okay, okay, we get it. <laughs> Normally when a guy wants to convince us he's this smart, he just buys Twitter. <laughs> Experience a sight that's equal parts haunting <laughs> and beautiful. Extreme close-ups of Killian Murphy's face. That's right. Oh. Throughout the movie. Oh. As he adopts a permanent bug-eyed stare that screams, <laughs> What is science done? Or just as likely, <laughs> Help! I'm a skeleton who runs on cigarettes. Yeah, honey on the rim of the martini <laughs> glass. That was that was his nutrition. That was the, the only day. calorific insect. Eat. In this powerful performance that Did exposes him every eat? inch of him for you to judge. <laughs> We were so close to killing four days of history class with this, but you just had to go and hang dong, huh? <laughs> Back to Fat Man and Little Boy on VHS then. Oh, oh my goodness. Sir, you kick it. <laughs> or you lick it. <laughs> no giggling. <laughs> Settle in for a three hour film <laughs> that's kind of like Inception. I'm teaching something no one here has dreamt of. If every layer of dream was a different congressional subcommittee. <laughs> it's now a About a try. <laughs> Telling Oppenheimer's story through a cabinet confirmation hearing. Why right. were his communist associations not seen as a security risk during the war? About a security clearance renewal process. My involvement with left-wing groups would not prove a bar to my That's work on the atomic program. Regarding an informal roundtable. <laughs> what are you guys doing in Los Alamos? Was it security tight? Of course it was. And a raucous joint committee session. Isotopes are less useful than electronic components, but <sighs> more useful than a sandwich. <laughs> That pissed. ends in a shocking twist. The man Robert embarrassed at the AEC secretly handpicked <laughs> the gray board special prosecutor. That's Gasp. right. Gasp. Uh, I can see I lost you there. Huh. Uh, <laughs> Big Bomb goes boo. <laughs> Gasp. Uh, cinema rules. <laughs> Prepare for a long ass movie that keeps you hooked by trotting out a new beloved actor every 10 minutes. Casey like Affleck Robert Downey Jr.'s triumphant of return yet. after whatever this was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Who's moved on from Tony Stark by playing a businessman slash weapons developer with a massive ego in black and white? <laughs> Emily Blunt steals every scene as Kitty Oppenheimer, oh, who's there to right literally there. drink and know things. <laughs> Wake up! Smart move by Robert to make her his hand. Matt Damon plays a guy pushing a technology he doesn't understand. So we all knew he'd nail the role. Fortune. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and every physicist you've ever heard of <laughs> pops up to reminisce oh, about this man. one time at bomb camp. Not Einstein, though. He's not invited. Great a scientist <laughs> mind of our time. Of his time. Of his how time. many people do you know who proved Einstein wrong? I'm not sure you understand, Albert. Yeah, take a hike, Einstein. E equals MC. Square. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around for a film with more going on than his usual oh, time one dead woman boy genius bit. There's also Please. some thoughtful engagement with American politics, meditations on guilt and responsibility, and the perspective of the Japanese and native people most directly affected by <laughs> the bombs. In a film with a nuanced message, <laughs> we may one day be engulfed oh. by nuclear fire, all thanks to J. Robert mm -hmm. Oppenheimer. But he he felt wee 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 bad about it, okay? <laughs> Sorry about the apocalypse. Ew.
<laughs> so bunker up for the least likely blockbuster of the summer. That's kind probably insane. Nolan's best film yet. Proving audiences will support and enjoy stories with extremely serious grown-up subject matter. But still, nothing could be funnier than someone watching this because Barbie memed them into the theater. <laughs> you guys ever think about dying? I do now, constantly. <laughs> constantly. Starring Irish Darbomb, Kitty Pride, okay. Oppie Doesn't Know, Hater Raid, Flo the Progressive, Boring okay. <laughs> Relativity Media. Jesse, we need to cook. Worst Casey scenario. Oh, geez. Bohemian testimony. Uncut that was nuclei. Like his only time of talking. Feigned in interest. Ten things I hate about Boo. <laughs> Josh Hartnett in glasses. In glasses. Blech, so unattractive. <laughs> Red Scare Redemption. <laughs> And the alternate what? reality where the fate of the world rests oh, on God. Josh Peck. Better than Drake Bell, I guess? <laughs> the Big yeah, Bang I mean, Theory. Definitely better. Wow. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. It's not possible. I like that it's clear they like the movie. They appreciate it. They understand that it's got its Nolanisms, but it works. And then for three hours and still wanting more, I really enjoyed it. I, I like, though, that every actor in this feels like their character. It doesn't feel like Matt Damon playing the character. It doesn't feel like Killian Murphy playing playing Oppenheimer. Like, it's it's Oppenheimer on the screen. Like, it's every character, every actor in this, they brought their A game. And Robert Downey Jr., considering what, Doolittle was the last thing he did, really? Did he do anything since then? Like, this was the role he should have done after... Avengers and Marvel stuff, all that. Like, this is the role. He was great in this. And to have that twist was actually pretty revealing. I thought it was great. I thought the way they went about it was good. And this was a really awesome way to go about a biopic. Like, it worked. And it's just talking throughout the movie for a biopic. Like, you, you, you enjoy it. You're locked in. You, you don't want to miss anything. And it's just, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed this movie. Now, let's check out the honest trailer for Barbie. Then we'll do the Barbenheimer. <laughs> I hate saying that even. A pitch meeting for both movies. So let's check out the Barbie one for Honest Trailers right now. You are Kenneth. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> From not Amy Schumer, thank God. Jesus. Comes Christ. another Greta Gerwig film about thank a pretty God. white girl's quarter life crisis. <laughs> but this time, it's the backdrop to a literal toy commercial Barbie. <laughs> Welcome to Barbie Land, a place where everyone lives by Nietzsche's doctrine of eternal recurrence. This is the best day ever. Do you guys ever think about dying? Uh, I mean, a pretty pink neighborhood <laughs> where everything is perfect. Uh, Unlike I mean... the toy aisle, it's a land where every race and body type of Barbie is treated equally, <laughs> as they all copy how they're being played with in the real world. Minus the times we make them kiss and mash their smooth plastic <laughs> mounds together. I do not have a v <laughs> Never stop me. Margot Robbie shines as stereotypical oh, Barbie. Geez. The best pairing of actor and toy cool. since Vin Diesel stuck his hand up a street shark. <laughs> shark! <laughs> You'll believe every step of her emotional oh journey, except the one time she doesn't feel pretty. Margot Robbie is the wrong person to cast if you want to make this point. In the first film since Legally Blonde, where someone pink and girly wasn't a villain. Because the villain role is already taken by man. I mean, Ken. Ryan Gosling <laughs> finally gets to shake off his sleepy-eyed murder face and take us back to his Disney dork roots. Dang. You gotta give me that pie. <laughs> In a comedic performance that transcends funny for someone who looks like Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And approaches <laughs> funny for someone who doesn't look like Ryan Gosling. I have all, all the genitals. I hope the nice guys was a fluke. Yo. But no, there's really nothing left for us uggos. Game over. <laughs> Goss wins. <laughs> I love the nice guys. Follow That's along awesome on Barbie and Ken's trip to the real world. Sometimes it's the reality we live in. Sometimes it's more zany than Barbie land. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There, Ken will speed run through the manosphere like a middle schooler's first Andrew Tate video. <laughs> What was that? While Barbie will have to balance handling her new feelings of inferiority mm -hmm. with the superior handling of the new Chevy Blazer EV. <laughs> <laughs> I got it was like a car commercial in so many moments. 
Her discomfort with being judged uh. by her exterior with the smooth comfort of the new Chevy Suburban's <laughs> interior. Thanks for the ride. This has been so much fun. <laughs> I'd like to have, actually. Oh, my God. In this epic voyage of self-discovery that wouldn't be possible without first getting into the 1956 <laughs> Chevy Corvette C1. <laughs> it's subtle, like a rock. <sighs> but Barbie and oh Ken aren't the Chevy only characters getting in and out of various Chevrolets. There's Gloria, whose show-stopping monologue builds on the ideas first set forth by a hat with Poe Buddy's Nerfict on it. <laughs> Not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. Her daughter, Sasha, a lifelike Bratz doll who shows young girls how yes, capitalism sir. subsumes all critiques into itself. You represent everything wrong with our culture. Barbie Land needs saving. Barbie needs saving. Weird Barbie, who's so weird you don't know if she's going to do the splits or reinforce China's territorial claims over Vietnam. Alan, <laughs> Michael Sarah's long overdue apology for the crimes of Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> Will Ferrell as Lord Business, uh, the CEO of Mattel, whatever. And a rousing game of spot the actor oh, from God. every British TV show Greta Gerwig likes. <laughs> because we okay. all stupid now, it's up to a Barbie movie to teach audiences about feminism. Oh, look! The Supreme Court! They're so smart. The patriarchy. <laughs> I'm a man with no power, does that make me a woman? And female anatomy. Jesus. I'm here to see my gynecologist. In a fresh new installment of Woke Wars 2K23, <laughs> that did the opposite of go broke, in a basic 101 level yes. lecture full of broad generalizations and naive fixes. By giving voice to the cognitive dissonance required to be a woman under the patriarchy, you robbed it of its power. Yes. Because it's a popcorn movie. Congrats, you're smarter than a child's doll. Here's a student loan. So enjoy right. the smash hit of the year that shines thanks to its incredible production design, What's perfect casting, good. and a release date that got them more free press than the Grimace Shade. There you go. In one of those hits that should remind Hollywood women like good comedy too. Mm. But Warner Brothers will see the results and conclude toys. <laughs> they love looking at toys. Cool. Give me Uno. Give me Barney. Give me my magic eight ball. <laughs> Woo! Toys. Starring. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, Pink Ranger. Please don't do a, a sequel to this. Please. Brand Parenthood. When is Gamora? <laughs> Barbie nice. Mama nice. drama. Alan. You're just a woman. Woman with a small brain. <laughs> the third the size of us. It's just science. <laughs> Cynthia from Rugrats. That was Anchorman, right? Rep sh Chong Chud. C-sections okay. in Barbie Land are a bit excessive. <laughs> Aqua. Every couple's costume this Halloween. <sighs> Every TikTok this year. <laughs> <laughs> when you know they had Tarantino. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, he loved that part. <laughs> uh, when you know they lost Tarantino. I don't want to touch a foot. When they stuck it to film bros. It's like I've been in a dream where I was somehow really invested in the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. And when they went too far. Oh my God, you've never seen The Godfather? Can you start the movie over and just talk through the whole thing? The Godfather is a masterpiece. <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola's mastery of the craft is beyond Oh, no, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Guys and dolls. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> I have a TV in my back. You know whose dream that is? Nobody. Nobody's dream. Did they not consult any men on the script? <laughs> Funny thing, though, like, Barbie was a fun movie. Barbie was a fun movie. A little bit on the nose in some moments. Weird with tone as far as, like, the difference between Barbie Land and the real world. Really the real world, because in aspects it felt like that business area was in Barbie Land, and then it was just, parts of it were just a little bit odd, but... It worked. Ryan Gosling, for me, was the best part of the movie. Uh, he, he was the best part. I could see him getting a nomination. Margot Robbie, not so much. Uh, the movie, maybe. But, like, it's just so on the nose with this story, but it does it in the most fun way that you'd want. And so I really enjoyed it. Between the two, though, like, the whole Barbenheimer thing, which we're about to watch the pitch meeting, as you can see right now, I think that made me not want to see it because I was like, these have nothing in common. They're both really good movies. Oppenheimer's better, but they're not really comparable anyway. But as far as best movie of the year for me, and my favorite so far, I would say is Oppenheimer for 2023. Um, even though I watched it at the very end of the year. There's other things I gotta watch. But Oppenheimer, I just really enjoyed it. But Barbie, it's a fun one. I normally don't like movies that have the whole, this is a character from another world that comes to Earth. Because I'm like, I'm I'm on Earth. I'm in America. I already know what things are like. I don't really care about seeing another character or or whatever 
experiencing Earth for the first time or experiencing America for the first time. Those aspects I normally don't care about, but they did it good here. And they went back to Barbie Land and brought some people back. So, like, it made it fun. It made it fun. So, I, I, it was it was fine. It was fine. It was still a good movie. I liked it. Again, Ryan Gosling killed it. So, that, that part I appreciate it. Before we get into the pitch meeting, if you like what you've seen so far, hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. We have a lot of fun here. Um, and let me know your thoughts on Oppenheimer and the Barbie movie, if you've seen both. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of each movie. Now let's check out the Barbenheimer pitch meeting <laughs> from Ryan George. Let's see what this is all about as far as how he combines the two movies. So you have a movie for me? Yes, yes sir, sir, I do. <laughs> Why are there two of Wait, you? What? Oh, well, we got to chatting and we have a very exciting no once way. in a lifetime double feature opportunity <laughs> here. Two absolute blockbusters. What are you talking about? Well, my movie's about uh, the popular kids doll Barbie. And mine's a historical drama oh. about J. Robert Oppenheimer, father of the atomic bomb. The okay, first of all, you guys me. have chosen some misleading shirts for this pitch <laughs> meeting. And second, that Oppenheimer one doesn't really sound like a blockbuster. <laughs> Christopher Nolan would be directing. Oh, okay, there it is. But how is this a good pairing of movies? <laughs> well, we got is. to talking and we realized our scripts are basically <laughs> asking the same question, which is, what if man has too much power? Oh, I thought we said, what if men have too much power? That's basically the same thing. Wow. So anyway, tell me about these movies. Well. Let's start with the depressing one. Wide scale death depressing oh, or Hollywood only making movies based on existing intellectual property with a proven track record of financial success depressing? <laughs> the second one. Well, the movie's gonna follow a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, right? Oh and God. let me tell you, life in plastic, it's, it's fantastic. fantastic. Oh, <laughs> can you brush her hair and undress her everywhere? Oh, oh my God, what? <laughs> what? What kind of movie do you think I'm pitching you? No, it's it's Barbie Girl. <laughs> yeah, by Aqua. Oh All right, my name's not Aqua and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Never mind, that's, I apologize. Disgusting. Like, Disgusting. It. So anyway, one day while Barbie's having a big old Barbie party mm -hmm. in Barbie land, she's gonna start thinking about death. Oh my God. And then she that's gets right. flat feet and cellulite, so she's like, something is off here. Okay. So with the help of this weird Barbie, she's gonna go through a portal into the real world and yep. Ken's gonna come along for the ride. Oh, and what's the real world like? Sometimes it's like the real world and sometimes it's like a magical cartoon. Oh, God. <laughs> so Barbie's gonna head there to the go. Mattel yeah. offices like, and turns what? out it's just run by a bunch of buffoons and also like just men. Very funny. Yeah, this is gonna just be a big men. middle finger right. to powerful executives everywhere. Hey, hey, what's up? And so this is gonna be kind of Mattel acknowledging the role that Barbie has played in like creating unrealistic body standards for women mm -hmm. uh -huh. and also saying that actually that Barbies just, aren't really yeah. about that they're actually empowering how's that gonna work well it. the best way I could describe it is that our partners at Mattel like eating cake but also they like having cake so if there's a way to do both of those they just be thrilled <laughs> yeah I don't see a problem with that why would that be a problem yeah it would kind of be like any harm that they've caused in the past wasn't so bad because it wasn't really intentional they're just kind of <laughs> silly we should get Will Ferrell to play the head guy people can't hate Will Ferrell that's a good plan so anyway in the real world Ken is gonna stumble upon mm -hmm. the fact that the patriarchy exists, so he's gonna think that's pretty cool and bring it back to Barbie Land. Uh oh. Yeah, so while the Barbies were in charge of Barbie Land before, now the Kens are gonna be in charge, right. and Maine Barbie's gonna have to go restore the natural order. Gotcha. And so that's really gonna let us drive home this message in the movie that the patriarchy is kinda messed up for women. Good message, <laughs> sure. Yeah, the patriarchy, no good. Not good at all. <laughs> totally hear you, absolutely. Very unfair system for sure. This whole patriarchy thing, it's bad. It's not good. Good at all. That's uh huh. And if you really think about it, the patriarchy is actually uh -huh. it's not yeah. a okay. good yeah. thing. I feel like you've gotten the point across. <laughs> it's not really fair, is it? The patriarchy. I mean. Yeah. No. I. Yeah. No. I, I understand mean. and agree. Patriarchy, more like not good yarky. Am I gonna get in trouble if I say even though I totally agree with the message, this is kind of a lot? Yeah, probably. <laughs> hey, check this out. Patriarchy. What are not you doing? Good. <laughs> did you just literally hit me across the head with the message? I did, yeah. So the last chunk of the movie is going to mainly focus literally, on that yes. and be mostly talking. <laughs> oh, same Z's, mostly talking. Okay, so tell me about this Oppenheimer one. Well, we've all seen the epic stuff that Nolan can do with stuff like sci-fi and superhero films, right? right? Yeah. So just imagine what he can do with three hours straight of historical science talk. Well, <laughs> taking it to the next level of epicness. Is it, though? Well, there's going to be epic level? music no. playing under every single word that's, that's spoken. When you I hear 
realize that. that. So anyway, with this movie, I think we had the opportunity to give the people what they've been dying for. What's that? Several J. Robert Oppenheimer sex scenes. <laughs> oh, finally. <laughs> father of the atomic bomb. More like father of a child who got by hooking up with a married woman. Yeah, gee. And that famous I am become death quote. He's going to say it while banging. Oh, yeah. Well, that was just fan service at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what else happens in the movie? Fan We're going to kind of intertwine several storylines. Because if I wrote this in a linear way, Christopher Nolan would find and murder me. That makes sense. So what are the storylines other than his love life? Well, there's going to be the whole Manhattan Project, right? He's going to find and recruit scientists like he's planning a heist in a Guy Ritchie movie. Okay. There's going to be this whole hearing to maybe revoke his security clearance during the Cold War, and his wife's going to kick ass when she's questioned. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, it's going to kind of come out of nowhere. Oh, it is. <laughs> so we're mostly going to show her being an alcoholic the kinda entire movie, and then there's nowhere. also the Senate confirmation thing going on. Who's confirmation? This guy, Strauss, who's been kind of right. plotting against Oppenheimer and suggesting he's a communist and stuff. Why is he so mad at Oppenheimer? Well, because he felt humiliated by Oppenheimer at a political thingy, and then also he thinks that Oppenheimer yeah. badmouthed him to Einstein. And so what happens with this hearing? Well, he's not going to get confirmed, and one of the people that voted against him is John F. Kennedy. He's from the next big political period of history. <laughs> yeah, he is. I love it. Perfect way to set up the sequel. <laughs> Oppenheimer 2, the rise of JFK is tight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not keep that door open, I guess? So how do these oh, movies end? We're going to find out it what Oppenheimer actually said to Einstein, and turns out it wasn't about Strauss Nothing at all. It was about how maybe they've set the destruction of the world in motion. And Barbie right. has a human vagina now. What? She's got a human <laughs> vagina now, so she's got to get that checked out, you know, professionally. It's important to get that checked out uh, by a professional, vaginally speaking. Please don't say vaginally. Vulva. So we need to leave these two movies feeling, you know, a sense of girl power and a healthy <laughs> dose of nuclear holocaust dread. I still think it's going to oh be hard to convince people to go watch both these movies on opening weekend. No. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Not me, oh, though. really? It, yeah, we just got to yes. come up with some catchy thing combining both movie names and make that blow up on social mm -hmm. media. And you have a name? We do. Let's hear it. Well, we were thinking... Oppen Barbenheimen. <laughs> oh, my God, what? <laughs> we'll workshop that. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, it killed it. Honestly, the only things that didn't work for me with Oppenheimer were the not love scenes, but just the relationship scenes between his wife, well, the girl he was with, Florence Pugh, and then his wife later on. Emily Blunt was great as the wife he married after she got a divorce from the husband. While they, yeah, uh, she, she was great in the role. And yes, does that scene towards the end come out of nowhere where she's kind of like going at the the guy who's, you know, asking questions and just going through all this stuff for the for the hearing or whatever? Um, not the confirmation one, the one about like his renewal. Just the way that this movie is put together as far as Oppenheimer, it's it's just it's different from most other biopics. Yes, it's kind of like a we're moving from one thing to the other, but the time differences and the way that he goes about Nolan goes about filming those scenes, some are black and white most of his color, but like it, it just, it, it fits. You don't feel like you're being like thrown around. I will say though about the dialogue, Nolan has just this way that you expect the dialogue to be said in his movies now. And it's kind of been the same in a lot of them. Uh, and in some scenarios where it almost doesn't seem like people are having actual conversations, like real people don't talk like this. Uh, but then there's moments where it does feel that way. But again, I feel like every actor brought their A game with this one. I didn't see the actors. I saw the characters and Casey Affleck killed it like in his role. And that's a very short role. He shows up and he's like kind of menacing in a way, but it's, it, it just feels realistic and everything about this felt realistic. Even the way it goes about the bomb test, the, the final actual bomb test before they send off uh, the, the, the bombs to, uh, to the government to use in Japan. That was like very riveting. And even the aftermath of that I thought was great and greatly done, almost horrific, like in a, in a horror movie kind of style. They did a really great job with that. I know a lot of people are talking about the issues they have as far as like not getting the perspective of the Japanese people or people affected by the actual bombing. They could have added something in there, but it didn't take me out of the movie. Like for me, it wasn't like a, they didn't talk about this. So this movie sucks. The movie is mostly about Oppenheimer's guilt with what was done, not having control of it. And, and also just the American response. I think that was like very well done here. And, and you kind of got an idea of like how people were responding or acting or thinking about the event, the eventual event and the aftermath of the event. I, I liked it. I thought that was great. Um, I, I didn't need to see the Japanese perspective. Like that's just, it's not what the movie's about. It's called Oppenheimer. So we're, we're gonna get everything from his point of view and what's surrounding him. Could there have been a conversation like someone that came to him and like kind of spoke to that? Sure, probably. But 
I didn't really care all that much uh, for, for it to affect my viewing experience here. So I thought it was great. Barbie again, fun movie. Uh, a little bit on the nose with some things. Like I said, I think Ryan George points that out pretty well here as well. <laughs> just with, you know, patriarchy is bad and all that kind of stuff. It's just a constant thing. Uh, but the movie is fun. And while it does have a, a message, it's kind of beating a dead horse in, in a lot of different moments. It's a fun movie. It's not one that I think I would watch all the time, but I'm going to watch it again pretty soon. I watched it like a couple weeks ago, actually. But I think I'll watch it again pretty soon. Oppenheimer, though. I'm going to rewatch that like probably the next day or so. And it's a three hour movie where I wanted more, even after it ended, I was like, Oh man, keep going. It's that good. So yeah, those are my thoughts on those. These were great though. Both the honest trailer and the pitch meeting for both movies, obviously <laughs> was wonderful. It was just cool to see two writers there for the pitch meeting, which was very different. And of course their shirts didn't match the movie they were talking about, which I thought was great. So it was a nice little plug there uh, from Ryan George. Let me know your thoughts though on the movies. Again, let me know your thoughts on the pitch meeting and the Oz trailers for these movies. Again, I always appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet already. Uh, like the video. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.